Uh, we'll be focusing under the caption, the battle is on. The battle is on. I will ask, I'm going to ask you at this time just to turn your Bibles with me to Acts chapter 8. Acts chapter 8. And when you have found it, I want you, you to say amen or type uh, yes, amen in the chat also. Acts chapter 8. Acts chapter 8. Are you there? Amen. All right, beautiful, beautiful. I'm happy that you are there. And as usual, I'm going to ask you to stand with me as I read a few verses from Acts chapter 8. I'm going to ask the church to stand with me at this time. All right. Uh, I see that you are on the quiet side today, <laughs> uh, but I hope you'll stay with me. Acts chapter 8. Let me just read from verse 9. Whatever version you have, you can follow. This one, I'll be using the ESV version. Acts chapter 8, I'll be reading from verse 9. And the Bible says, But there was a man named Simon who had previously practiced magic in the city and amazed the people of Samaria, saying that he himself was somebody great. They all paid attention to him from the least to the greatest, saying, This man is the power of God that is called great. Verse 11 says, And they paid attention to him because for a long time he had amazed them with his magic. But when they believed Philip, as he preached the good news about the kingdom of God and the, the name of Jesus Christ, they were baptized, both men and women. Even Simon himself believed. And after being baptized, he continued with Philip. And seeing signs and great miracles performed, he, he was amazed. Verse 14 says, now when the apostles at Jerusalem heard that Samaria had received the word of God, they sent to them Peter and John, who came down and prayed for them that they might receive the Holy Spirit. For he had not yet fallen on any of them, but they had only been baptized in the name of the Lord Jesus. Verse 17. Then they laid their hands on them, and they received the Holy Spirit. Now when Simon saw that the Spirit was given through the laying on of the apostles' hands, he offered them money, saying, Give me this power also, so that anyone whom I lay my hands may receive the Holy Spirit. Verse 20, But Peter said to him, May your silver perish with you, because you thought you could obtain the gift of God with money. You have neither part nor lot in this matter, for your heart is not right before God. Verse 22 says, Repent therefore of this wickedness and pray to the Lord that if possible the intent of your heart may be forgiven you. For I see that you are in the girl of bitterness and in the bond of iniquity. Verse 24 and last says, And Simon answered, Pray for me to the Lord, that nothing of what you have, sa have said may come upon me. The battle is on. Heavenly Father, we ask that your presence will continue to abide with us. I pray that you will show up, speak to our hearts, and we're praying, Lord, that at the end of this message, none of us will be, be the same, but will experience transformation as a result of your power. In Jesus' name I pray, amen and amen. You may be seated in the house of the Lord. The battle is on. I, I do not like starting sermons on a sad note. 
But, but, I, but, but I also have to face the facts. On Tuesday of this week, I was, you know, reading the Washington Post. And I felt, I felt ra rather disturbed since uh, the elementary school tragedy that took place in Texas, which claimed the lives of 19 children and two teachers. Uh, there have been, uh, well, at that time, 15 other shootings, and I know a few more took place after from California to Arizona to Tennessee. The Washington Post highlighted that, you know, mass killings like Buffalo and Uvalde uh, become national news, but many mass shootings do not. They just end up being local stories. However, this is what really disturbed me the most. Uh, six teenagers, ages 13 to 15, were injured uh, by uh, gunfire in Tennessee, which seemed to be an altercation between other teenagers. You may ask, so where do they get the guns? Hmm? Will the leaders address the loopholes within the gun laws? Two others were injured during a shooting at a party uh, in Pennsylvania. According to the news, the victims ranged uh, in age from 14 to 21. I'm talking about the younger generation. A father and his nine-year-old son were shot inside a car in Philadelphia last Sunday. What is happening in this country and in our world today? It said uh, last Friday afternoon in Michigan, uh, three children under the age of 10 and a woman dead of apparent, apparent gun wounds. They found them dead. Sad. We are in a serious battle between life and death. And the church is questioning when will our leaders address the loopholes within the gun laws. When will Congress act? Uh, one innocent life lost to a gun is uh, too many. It's too many. And the president doesn't have the power to address the issue on a broad scale. Congress must act. And I must say that as a church, we can't keep silent. Because it is a battle between life and death. Have mercy. I will say to my leaders, do not let money and politics blind your judgment. Every life has value. Am I right today? Church, while we pray, we also have to act. We have to speak up for Congress to act. There is a battle between life and death. But I don't know about you. I'm choosing life. Have mercy. Yeah, yeah, we have to choose life. So we have to speak up. In Acts chapter 8, we see a similar battle taking place. Uh, there was great persecution in Jerusalem. So they were scattered throughout Judea and Samaria. And those who were scattered went about preaching the word. Isn't it amazing how God can use what man meant for evil, for good, have mercy, uh, for men and women to hear the gospel? Philip, the Bible says, went to Samaria and preached the word. Uh, please remember, my friends, that Samaritans were despised, detested, and disliked. Uh, uh, you would not find a Jew associating with a Samaritan. Uh, there was a battle between them. But praise the Lord, we serve a, a God who associates himself with everyone. Therefore, the gospel is for the despised, the detested, 
and the disliked. It is also for the unloved, the unwanted, and the undesired. The gospel is for the ungodly, the unchristian, un and the uncivilized. I'm happy to tell you that the gospel is for the upper class, the middle class, and the lower class class. My son would put it this way. The gospel is for the Americans, the Caribbeans, and everyone. It is for the Indians, the Asians, and every man. The gospel is for everybody. And that's why I believe that our leaders need to value our lives. The passage highlights several battles. Several battles that are presently going on. Firstly, there is a battle between God's spirit and evil spirits. Mm. Uh, the passage tells us that Philip went to Samaria. He preached the word and did signs. Thus, the people were amazed because uh, unclean spirits came out crying out with a loud voice. My friends, there is a battle between the spirit of God and evil spirits to control our lives. If God should allow us to see what's really taking place, uh, I'm telling you, you would be amazed. Have mercy. However, I am excited to share with you, my friends, uh, that the spirit of God and the enemy cannot dwell in the same vessel. Am I talking to somebody today? The devil can't possess you once you are connected to Christ. Therefore, therefore, those who don't know Christ, have mercy, their lives are completely at risk. In addition to this, I want to say for Christians who take their lives, uh, the life for granted and allow the worldliness to seep in, where you don't have a desire to pray or to talk with God, I'm telling you that the Spirit of God cannot dwell in such a man or a woman. And this is the exact reason why the devil does everything to distract us from communicating with God. The devil knows uh, the moment we do not have a connection, uh, he can possess us and uh, abuse us. He can tamper with our minds. As a matter of fact, my friends, uh, there are several examples of possessed people in the Bible the devil used and abused. Let me just refer to two. The Bible tells us in Luke chapter 8. That there was a man who was living uh, uh, among the tombs and he was possessed with demons. Listen to how the devil messed him up. This man uh, stopped wearing clothes. Don't try to picture it. But, but, but this man stopped uh, wearing clothes and he was now living with the dead. Mm. He was no longer living in his cozy apartment. He found himself uh, uh, finding residency in the cemetery. This man could not be contained. He was under heavy security. They chained uh, his hands and uh, feet. But because he was so was possessed, he, was, he had so much strength, he easily broke the chains and he found himself in the desert. He was constantly crying out and using stones to abuse himself he would cut his skin all over a matter of fact one of the demons answered jesus by saying his name is legion for they are many uh, listen to me carefully my favorite author puts it this way she said says in the roman army a legion consisted of three to five thousand men Satan's hosts also are marshaled into companies and the single company to which these demons belong number no less than a legion. We have to understand what we are dealing with. This man was possessed with many demons. But praise the Lord. There was one man who could grant him freedom. There was one man who could set him free and his name is Jesus. He confronted the demons and cast them out into the pigs. Why? Jesus and the, and the devil can't dwell in the same vessel. When Jesus steps in, demons have to flee. At the word of Jesus, demons have to flee. In the very presence of Jesus, demons have to run. I'm so grateful the power, for the power of God. Am I talking to somebody? Ah, mercy, mercy, mercy. Uh, let, let me give you one more. Uh, uh, a dad came to Jesus in Matthew chapter 17. 
pleading and requesting for Jesus to have mercy upon his son. Uh, he had seizures and was suffering greatly, for he had often fell into fire and into water. Because of the demon, he had seizures. Thus, the convulsions caused him to fall into water and into fire and into water. What an abuse of the devil. The suicidal attempts was a res as a result of the demon in him. Mark says he was dumb and foaming at his mouth. You should understand why the dad had to cry out for God to have mercy upon his son. Jesus indeed had mercy upon this boy, had mercy on the boy and cast out the demon. And immediately this boy was restored. Aren't you happy to know that the spirit of God and evil spirits cannot dwell in the same vessel? When Jesus steps in, I'm telling you that demons have to flee. A matter of fact, when the Spirit of God abides in us, no demon can squatter on our territory. Am I talking to somebody? When Jesus abides in us, no demon can take residence. That's the reason it is important for you and I to have a connection with heaven. Uh, let me put it this way. Let me come closer to you. Uh, uh, the, the devil wants us to depend on Wi-Fi connection with Jesus. Uh, 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 and and Wi-Fi connection is not necessarily dependable. Have mercy. Uh, I, I remember it was earlier in the you know, pandemic when everybody was excited about Zoom and started you know, learning about the whole Zoom, etc., etc. And I remember I was you know, invited to share a devotional and uh, I, I felt good because you know, I thought I had a, a fairly good setup. I had bought lights and mic and had a virtual background. So you know, I was happy doing this presentation because I, you know, I thought that everything really looked good. But after a while, I, I, I realized that I, messages started coming in. And they said, Pastor, you're breaking up. You're breaking up. You're, you're dropping service. We can't hear Sister Donald, We can't hear you clearly. We can't hear you. You're breaking up, Pastor. So the entire presentation I kept getting the message. I was disappointed. After a few days, a, a, a friend reached out to me and he said, I know what your problem is. He said, all you need to do is just purchase a cable and connect it directly to the router. Have mercy, have mercy, have mercy. Uh, the moment I did it, the problem was uh, solved. Uh, I don't know if you see where I'm going right now. Uh, I'm sharing this to say, my friends, uh, that you can't depend on Wi-Fi connection with Jesus. Uh, your service can get weak at any time. Uh, things can block the service. It is susceptible to interference uh, where it can be blocked by objects. Uh, but when you are connected Connected directly to the source of the devil cannot squatter on your territory. I said, when you are connected directly to the source of the devil cannot possess a cable connection is insulated from interference. When you spend time on your knees, you have direct connection and the devil cannot squatter. When you spend time in the word of God, you have direct connection and the devil cannot squatter. When you spend time in worship, you have direct connection and the devil cannot take residence. The devil cannot take residence because the Bible declares greater is he that is in you than he that is in the world. When you have direct connection nothing can separate you from the love of God. That's the reason Paul says for I am persuaded that neither death nor life nor angels nor principalities nor powers nor things present nor things to come nor height, nor depth, nor any other creature shall be able to separate you from the love of God. You and I need to have a direct connection to the source. Because when you're connected to the source, the devil can't enter. I wonder if we understand the importance of being connected to Jesus. The battle is on. We are in a warfare. So I say to those in the building and online, stay connected. 
Don't you depend on Wi-Fi connection of mercy, Jesus. Secondly, there is a battle between God's power and magic. Mm -mm. Uh, the Bible tells us from verse 9 and onwards about this. But I want you to understand that the power that is accessible to the church is totally distinct from that of the world. I don't want you to miss that. The Bible says that there was a man called Simon who had formerly practiced magic or sorcery. Uh, he claimed to be great, you know, to be powerful and uh, someone of importance that people of all classes paid attention to him. But when Philip came on the scene and presented the good news, the Bible clearly tells us that the people got baptized, men and women, including Simon. That's the power of God. This is enough to prove, my friends, that the power that is accessible to the church, accessible to you and I, is totally different from the world. The world depends on magic for their survival. The world depends on witchcraft and black magic and invo uh, invoking spiritual powers. Uh, but, but, but there's a total difference with the power of God. Uh, let, let me use this as a teaching moment. Let me use this as a teaching moment. Uh, the, the concept of magic started from the Garden of Eden. The devil disguised himself uh, as a, in the form of a serpent. Uh, mercy and uh, spoke. Who has ever seen a serpent talking? Have mercy. That, 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 that's the first magic. He offered Eve an elevated status. Uh, uh, she would be like God. The same thing is happening today where people are seeking elevated status and have submitted themselves to the devil. And can I tell you that people who submit themselves to the devil, the devil don't abuse them, you know. Uh, I want you to know that. I want you to know that. You're going to understand what I'm trying to say. They are seeking for power to perform signs yes. and wonders. Yes. Have mercy. Hear me today, my friends. Performing signs and wonders is not the primary source to prove someone is connected to God. Yes. It is obedience to the word of the living God. And that's the reason I don't run down every single healing ministry. Because some healing ministry I don't trust. Because you have to understand that the devil can also heal. Are you listening to the preacher today? The devil made two promises to them. Which opened up the way for magic and spiritualism. He told them that they would be divine and immortal they would become like god and they would not surely die ah let me give you a quick example through the bible we see that men we see men and women practicing magic for example in exodus chapter 7 it tells us that uh, aaron and moses are face to pharaoh and the passage says that Aaron uh, cast down his staff before Pharaoh uh, uh, and the servants uh, uh, and the servants and it became a serpent Therefore, Pharaoh summoned his men, come on, the sorcerers and the magicians, man, and, and they came and they did their secret arts and uh, all that they could do. And, and yes, my friends, they cast down their staff uh, 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 and, and, uh, uh, and they became serpents. But you and I knew what knows what happened. But the Bible says uh, Aaron's uh, staff uh, swallowed up. Dear staffs, have mercy. Have, I said there's a difference with the power of God. The magicians did the same thing for the first plague and the second plague. But when it got to the third plague, they could not replicate it. They could not produce any lies or not. Therefore, the magicians said to Pharaoh, this is the finger of God. Have mercy, have mercy, have mercy. God's power is distinct from that of the world uh, people do it because they like power yeah they are seeking for power over people and and power over nature and power over circumstances and we see modern uh, entanglements of magic and people believe in horoscope and and uh, all kinds of healing ministries and and witchcraft but hear me today church as i'm telling you i'm not preaching against pastors uh, but there are some healing ministries that i run from with all my life it is taking over our world today 
And I'm telling you, if I was performing some healing today, church would be packed under the... <laughs> Have mercy. But that is not the primary source to prove that you are connected to Jesus. But the Bible tells us a little about the power of God. However, in verse 12, it says that Philip preached the good news about the kingdom of, G uh, uh, kingdom of God and the name of Jesus. And the Bible says they were all baptized, including the man who was practicing magic. <laughs> Have mercy. Don't you miss this. Uh, Simon, who had formerly practiced magic, uh, got baptized. He recognized uh, that there was a greater power uh, than the one he claimed to have had. Uh, yes, my friends, it was not the kind of power that required the chantings and, and drummings and dancing. No, it wasn't the kind of power that had to be calling and calling on the spirits uh, to come and help. Uh, it was the kind of power that simply requires faith. Are you listening to me? It's the kind of power that required faith. Uh, Paul experienced this power and testified about it. Uh, Paul says, I am not ashamed, I'm not ashamed uh, of the gospel, for it is the power of God. God uh, unto salvation uh, to everyone who believes. Uh, this is the power that transforms sinners into saints. Uh, the power that transforms murderers uh, into preachers and thieves into disciples. Uh, this is the power that transforms magicians into Christians. Uh, this is the power that transforms adulterers uh, into ministers. Uh, when you come into contact with this power, you can cannot be the same. Simon experienced this power. And the Bible says he was baptized. What a power. The power that is accessible to us is distinct from that of the world. And lastly, my friends, uh, a battle, there's a battle between the heavenly and the earthly. Uh, when you look uh, from verses 14 to 24, it tells us that Peter and John came to Samaria. And after they had received the word, they prayed that they may receive the Holy Spirit. They then laid hands on the people and, you know, they laid hands on the people. And the Bible says that they all received the Spirit. However, Simon uh, stood there and observing what was happening. When he realized that the people received the Spirit by the laying of hands, he desired to receive the same power. So he could lay his hands on others too. My friends, mm. this man said, I want this power. This is clearly showed Rather, he clearly showed the condition of his heart. His desire was to receive power so he could lay the hands of these people so that they can receive the Spirit. Just, just look at the condition of his heart. The Bible says that he offered money. Mm. He offered money. Money because of the love of power. Not only the love of power, but he was squandering God's blessings in his life. Don't you miss this? When the, when the apostles recognized was happening, listen to what Peter said to him. Peter said, may your silver perish with you. Because you thought you could obtain the gift of God with money. You have neither part nor lot in this matter, for your heart is not right before God. Repent, therefore. Thank God for mercy for his wicked, uh, for, for, of this wickedness of yours. And pray to the Lord that if possible, the intent of your heart may be forgiven. Look at what 23 says. Verse 23 says, For I see that you are in the God of bitterness and in the bond of iniquity. A uh, uh, girl of bitterness uh, speaks to uh, uh, that he was overly jealous. He was bitterly envious. Mm. He looked at the apostles and saw what was happening. And this, this man 
envied this power. The Holy Spirit is a gift from God and cannot be bought or sold. Are you listening to me? Ah, but people today have squandered the blessings of God because of envy. I soon get the power because of envy. Envious over what people have. Have mercy, have mercy, have mercy, have mercy. I say, en I'm saying envious of, over what people have. Uh, you can't even afford it, but because uh, your neighbor have it and your friends have it, uh, you squander the little blessings that you have uh, because of jealousy and envy. I hope I don't get myself uh, in trouble today. I told you before that the car that I really want to drive, uh, if I should purchase that car, myself and family would have to live uh, in it. Have mercy, have mercy. Hear me today, my friends. Uh, we see the same thing happening today where men and women are squandering God's blessings uh, because they are bitterly envious. I, I, I needed two shirts the other day and uh, um, two ties. And I went to a particular place. I think it's called Men's Warehouse. Am I right? Yes. Yeah, I'm not talking against them now. But I went to Men's Warehouse. I'm going to be honest with you. They sell good clothes, man. They sell some good, nice name brand clothes. Have mercy. But all I took up were two shirts and two ties. And when I got to the cashier and he told me the price, I dropped them and said, take them. And I walked out of the building. I said, if you expect me to pay so much money just for... The man said, these are name brands, sir. Uh, uh, maybe the clothes that you're wearing is not name brands. But, but these are... I, I, said, I, sir, I said, don't go there. I dropped them and I walked out uh, of the store because I said, I'm not going to squander the little that... I have. I am God's steward. You are God's steward. And he expects you to be responsible for the, with the little that you have. Don't you envy anybody, my friends. Be thankful for the little that you have. Are you listening to the preacher? If Simon was grateful, if he was living a grateful life, he wouldn't have been envious because Simon should have been thanking God that he's no longer a magician, but now a Christian. But now he was observing the apostles and became or are envious of them. But do I have some grateful people in the building and online who is thankful for God's blessing? Are you thankful for God's blessing over your life today? I don't know about you, but I'm thankful for the little that I have. I'm not going to be envious over anybody's blessings. God is good to me, and I am going to be grateful. Are you grateful that God has transformed your life from a sinner to a saint. Are you thankful today uh, that God is blessing you and keep blessing you and keep blessing you? Are you grateful uh, for the shelter over your head? Uh, maybe you want to live in a big house, uh, but are you thankful for your little apartment? Uh, are you thankful for the clothes uh, on your back? Uh, do I have a witness, somebody who is thankful uh, for your church family? Are you thankful uh, for the job that you have? Uh, are you and even if you are not don't have a job are you thankful for God's provision are you thankful for God's forgiveness over your life are you thankful for his loving kindness and his tender mercies I'm saying to God's people today be thankful don't you be envious don't watch people Uh, and I must say, uh, let, let me call them politicians. Uh, for those politicians who are squandering money because of power, have mercy. When it comes time uh, 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 for election and so on, they are willing to spend all the money there is uh, even just to get your vote. Uh, and no right now we are crying out uh, simply for them to tighten the gun laws. Uh, and they are failing us. Uh, I'm saying to the leaders of this country, stop squandering God's resources. I thought you'd have said amen. Hear me today, church. It is a battle between life and death. Watch this. I don't know what Simon's conclusion was, you know. I wish I knew, but I, I don't know what Simon's conclusion was. Uh, they, they gave him a serious message. And the message was repent. 
and pray. So he can receive forgiveness. I don't know what his choice was. I, I don't know what choice he made. But I'm saying to you that you and I can make a choice. Uh, you and I uh, can determine our own conclusion. And I want to say to God's people and everyone in the hearing of my voice, choose life. It is a battle between life and death. What will your conclusion be. That's why I want to end this message today. What will your conclusion be? What will my conclusion be? The battle is on. The battle is real. You see that there is a battle going on right now, right now between good and evil. What will your choice be. I've made up my mind that I'm going to choose life. Yes, yes. And I want to encourage you to choose life. Yes, yes. So many have turned over their lives to witchcraft. Horoscope. You want to know what your future is going to be. So you're, you're, you're reading up the horoscope because you want to know what's going to happen. And, and etc. Only God knows the future. Yeah. Choose life. Have mercy. Have mercy. Yeah. People have turned over them, themselves to witchcraft. Seeking power. I've learned of politicians who yeah. find a witch too. <laughs> Because they want to know, well, Caribbean people know, that's Obia man, you're right. <laughs> but I say to you today, choose life. The Bible says, as Joshua says, as for me and my house, we will serve the Lord. I'm not going to choose magic. Because God's power is greater than magic. Any day, anyhow. And magic couldn't have done what the power of God has done for me today. Have mercy. I said magic couldn't have done what the power of God has done for you. The power. Look how you're looking good and nice. Hey, magic couldn't transform you so. Have mercy. Couldn't. So for those, let me use the term who those know, for those who know the term Obia man. Yeah. <laughs> keep wasting your time. <laughs> you keep wasting your time. Uh, I, I remember back then we had a, a, a series man and we spent the time preaching against the witchcraft and spiritualism and Obia. I'm going to be honest with you, it's the first I've ever seen such large stones. Some large stones block the road. Because there was an obia man living up on top of the hill. <laughs> Mercy. But I say to you today, choose life. Choose life. Is your desire that choose life today? I'm going to ask you to stand with me. Stand with me. Stand with me. Stand with me. Here's my musician. Please play. I love this song. My son says, Daddy, you always love this song. All to Jesus. I surrender all to him. I freely give you. can still where you are and just sing this song before we close up. Oh man, man, I can't believe it's after one already. Have mercy on me. Uh, I would ever love and trust him in his presence. Dearly. Dearly. I want us to sing that song. First verse and the chorus. We're going to surrender everything to Christ today. Because we can only find hope in Him. Oh, to Jesus. I surrender all to Him. All to him freely give. I will ever love and trust Him.
to pray, but there may be somebody who heard this message today, whether on, uh, in the building or online, not yet giving your life to Christ. I'm saying to you today, choose life. This world has nothing to offer you. And whatever this world offers will not last. Choose that which will last. Choose that which will transform your life into a better person. If that's your desire, I believe that link is online right now. And if you're online, just click on that link. Provide us with your information. We'll be in touch with you. Probably if there's somebody here in the building not yet giving your life to Christ and you want Christ to cover you so that the devil can't interfere with you. Your desire is to give your life to Christ so he can cover you. Not yet, yet giving your life to Christ. Just raise your hand. Is there such an individual? Male, female, boy, girl. Don't be afraid to raise your hand for Jesus. Is there any? Is there any? While others are online right now signing up, is there any building? In any building? Let's raise your hand. Let's raise your hand. Let's raise your hand. My brothers and sisters, if it is your desire to be covered by Jesus, to be connected to the source that the devil cannot squatter on your territory, just raise your hand. Let's raise your hand. Praise the Lord. Loving Lord. We are so grateful that we serve an awesome and mighty and powerful God. We thank you, Lord, for this word from Acts chapter 8 today. Yes, Lord. We realize, Lord, that the battle is on. We are in a warfare. Your word reminds us that we rest not against flesh and blood, but against principalities and powers in high places. But your word also reminds us that you are far above yes. principalities and powers. You are all powerful. Amen. So we know that we are not fighting a losing battle. Yes, Lord. You have already won the victory for us. Great God, you sent your son Jesus yes. to die on that old rugged cross. cross. And for that, we just want to give you thanks for the victory in Jesus. Amen. Because we have found victory in Jesus, we are here today praising you, yes. adoring your mighty Hallelujah. and holy name. May we as a people keep connected to the source so that the devil cannot take residence in our hearts. May we keep connected to heaven because we know that no matter how much the devil tries, he will not get the opportunity to reside. For those individuals today who don't have that connection, whether in the, in the building and online, May they repent today. Yes. May they turn from their evil ways, evil desires, and allow your power to transform them. Thank you, Lord, for speaking to our hearts today. Yes, Lord. Thank you for your presence yes. with us. Thank you. Thank you for all the blessings we have received. Thank you. Thank you. Hallelujah. Thank, you. thank you. In Jesus' name, we pray and God's people say, Amen, amen and Amen. God bless you.